Hi everyone, Zulin here again with another science-based tutorial on sliding doors today, automatic sliding doors. So I get my doors and drop them into the scene. Um, I think I'll put them at zero, zero, zero. Oh, I want to move them up slightly as well. Okay, now my doors are made up of a parent and a left and right door um, that are the ch ch children of the parent. Um, you need to always do it this way because once you've made the animations, they are positioned relative to the parent. Um, now, if you didn't do it this way and you wanted to move the doors around the scene or rotate them in any way, straight away it would muck up your animations um, because they're relative to the scene and not the parent. So that's the way you do it. Um, now we want to animate from the parent. So you open up the animation timeline and while selected on the parent, click create. And then um, the first animation we want to make is just a placeholder. It's an idle animation. It won't even be an animation. So we'll just type in idle and click return and then in my folder we should have the controller, it's made for the sliding doors and the idle animation. So next thing we want to do is make the um, open animation and also the close animation. Right, so now the animator will automatically have all of these in it. It have the idle where it comes in and it have the open and close which we will connect up later on once we've actually made the animations. So now we need to add property for the door. Um, I, I recommend um, locking the timeline while you're doing this, um, especially with dealing um, with a parent with lots of children underneath that you're animating um, because um, you can actually animate it um, from the timeline just changing values but um, it's always nice to be able to actually click on the door without losing the timeline you're on or the thing you want to animate without losing the timeline of the parent. Um, right so now the first thing we need to do is add a couple of properties one for the left door one for the right door. Um, the first property is going to be transform property because we're just moving the door it's position and we want to do the same um, th th there's the actual all the positions x y and z and you could animate them just by changing these values here but we're not going to do it that way so we want to add a door left right door property same as left position close this down so now we've got both the right and the left door selected in the timeline and we go to the end of the timeline now we will click on the left door and um, I think I want to change the position to zero no that's too far let's see what number it is when it's Uh, well, I don't think I'm going to get it on an even number, so I just have to go with a manual one for now, um, and do the same for the 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 left um, door. And now we need to make the keyframe um, um, for this part of the timeline, and you just click this little diamond with a plus next to it and that would create the keyframes. Now if we press play the door should yeah, open. The next thing we want to do is go to the open animation. Ah, I've actually done this on the close animation. Well that's actually, uh, that doesn't actually matter too much. We can do it this way around. Um, the, what I was about to show you is for the close and open animations, once they're made or, or at any time, you need to turn off the loop for them because we don't want it to be looping. 
Okay, so we've got our backwards close animation, <laughs> which is wrong for this, but it's actually right for the next animation we're making. So if you click on the timeline, click all, copy, um, sorry, control C to copy, and then we go to the open animation, click in there again, and control V to paste. And now we have our open animation. There we go. Now to get our close animation, what we need to do is actually just reverse around the open animation that it's already got. So we want to, um, I'll put another keyframe just here, just temporarily. And now what I can do is I can move this keyframe to that side, this keyframe to that side, put them back at one, back at one, and now delete this one. Oh, shouldn't have deleted that one, I don't know why it did that. Now it will delete it. Delete that one. And now this should be a close animation. There we go. There we've got our close animation. Right, now the next stage is um, making the animator work. Um, we need to add a couple of triggers here. Um, oh, sorry, that's not what we wanted. need to add the triggers here in parameters trigger and we want an open trigger and a close trigger now we need to connect all of our animations up with transitions so I just like to be tidy So click on the idle and make a transition and connect it to the open animation. And the transition is going to be open, so we will put a condition in there. And it's the open condition. Now we create a transition from open to closed. And exactly the same. Create a condition and this time it's closed or close and we make a transition from idle uh, from close to idle this one's going to be an automatic one um, oh yeah that's the uh, also a point is in the settings of um, of the other two transitions you want to close a uh, turn off has exit time because you want the um, it to be controlled by a trigger and not by a time but after, um, when it closes and um, goes back to the idle, uh, it doesn't matter. It has an exit time because you want it to be going back there. And and it doesn't also matter if the idle has an exit time. Oh yeah, that that's that one. Yeah. Right. So I think that is our animator working. Our, I don't think there's anything more I have to do to that. So now the next stage is the actual doors and to make them animate. Um, so add a component. Um, trigger. Trigger activator. Collider trigger activator. I can never remember what that one's called. Um, and this this um, component is using a collider. I don't know if you can see. My object's also got a collider there. It's a trigger collider, so it's not something you can actually bang into. You can actually walk completely through it, and all it would do is trigger something while you're when you hit it and while you're inside it. Um, um, and as you can see, it's set to trigger to do that. And as you can see, I've made it so it's a little bit out in front of the door and a little bit out behind the door. So you have to actually walk into it there and out of it there to, to untrigger it. Um, 
so the next thing we want to do is um, add some events for that trigger. Um, I add three events on each on the exit and the entry of the trigger. Um, one of the events is the actual triggering, opening the door and closing the door. One, I actually put a reset trigger event in there because it it makes it a little bit stabler in my experience so far. And the third one is for to trigger the audio because this has also got an audio source on it with a sound um, that makes it sound a bit like a Star Trek door when you open it and close it. So the first thing we want to do is add the um, well, the first thing we need to do is actually drag the ob the the game object into that event, so it knows what we're trying to do something to, and also into the second event, and also into the third event. I believe that should work. We'll soon find out. Now, in the animator, what we want to do is we want to set trigger. string I believe that's the right one yep set trigger string and this is it's going to be open so we want to um, we want to fire off this trigger open and then the next thing we want to do is we want to make a reset trigger string and we want to reset the close trigger because we're about to go in that so we want to make sure you know that that's working perfectly and then we also want to go to audio source and just put play and that will play that audio source and we want to do the same for the exit as well um, so we put in the parent we open up the animator and we want to set trigger close we also want to reset the trigger for open oh I think I pressed the wrong one then yeah I did an in needs to be a string for open and now we want to um, oh I'm on the wrong thing play for the audio okay so in theory that should be it working. Um, let's just press play and give that a quick test. Okay. Here we are in front of the doors. We go into the glider and they open out the other side and they close and you can do that through both sides. There we go. That is our doors made. So that's it. The end of the tutorial. The doors are made. Um, obviously um, we can add um, a uh, room furniture component and a uh, virtual goods component and upload this to Sign Space now, um, which I've covered in uh, previous tutorials. Um, and yeah, and you can make your scene up and enjoy your sliding doors. Thanks everyone, hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and um, look forward to the next one.